Innovation Video presents a sports extravaganza. Live from the Siebens Fieldhouse on the campus of Buena Vista College. Iowa Conference Basketball. I'm Gary Benias. And I'm John Pagel, Gary. And welcome to our game tonight. We're going to take a look at the starting lineups for the Buena Vista Beavers tonight. At, at guard, number 10 is Jim Berg as we listen to the national anthem. Other guard for the Beavers tonight, Junior Matt Seward, number 24, six foot from Independence, Iowa. Number 34, Mike Fay, sophomore. He'll be playing forward. The other forward tonight, number 42, Brad Rohr. And rounding out the Beaver lineup, John, is number 50, Roger Kolke, a sophomore. He's a center from Nora Springs. Let's take a look at that Simpson Redmond lineup, John. Well, starting for at guard, number 11, Brent Brown. He's replacing uh, J.D. Hartung, who was originally scheduled to start. The other uh, guard, I believe, Gary, is uh, Chris Hotch. He's a 6'4 junior. At center is Ed Baskey, a uh, former prep high school star from uh, uh, Zering Nesco. The other forward is Carl Brack, a 6'8 freshman. And at the other forward, Gerald Boagney, a 6'5 freshman, who uh, is a pretty solid ball player himself. And uh, really, two young freshmen starting at forwards. Uh, Coach. Uh, Bruce Wilson feels he's got a young ball club except for a couple of his guards. Yeah. Right now we're taking a look at the Iowa Conference standings and as you can see it's Buena Vista in the number five slot taking on Simpson. Uh, the Beavers six and five while Simpson four and seven but don't let that deceive you because earlier this season Simpson used a 16 to two run at the start of the game to put the Beavers in a hole early. This was at Simpson. The Redmen led 46 to 28 at the half and finished with a 91 to 68 win. Brad Roar's 15 points paced the Beavers while 12 different players scored for Simpson. 12, they got good bench depth, John. Uh, Gary, uh, according to most coaches in the league, they feel that Simpson is the deepest and the most athletic team in the conference. I so, can agree with you there, John. We'll see what they can do tonight against Buena Vista. And there's the tip off. Roger Kolke doing the honors, gets it to Jim Fay. So Beaver's ball, let's see if they can take command and jump to a quick start here tonight. Gary, they're running a little man-to-man -man, uh, defense. They're trying to keep Matthew Seward and Jim Berg off the scoring. And they tried to there. Number 11, Brent Brown fouls Jim Berg. Now check that, Matt, oh, Matt Seward. Seward. Yeah, that's right, so Seward has a chance to tack up a few points. Seward really consistent from the free throw line, John. Matt Seward is one of the leading free throw shooters on the team, Gare, and as well as from three point land, Matt hit a key bucket last night in the Beavers' big win over Central. Right there, Seward puts the Beavers on the board for their first chance, one to nothing our score. Second hoist is good. Beavers establish a two to nothing lead here in the early going. With 19.45 on the clock left in the first half. Simpson with the ball now, taking it down court. Simpson the, behind the leadership of Coach Bruce Wilson. They can't quite find the bucket there, and the Beavers are on the roll. Um, Gary, the, what the main thing for Central, I should say Simpson, what they're trying to do tonight is they're trying to get uh, Ed Baskey the ball out. He's their main player as well as Chris Hodge. They feel they can uh, use those two and then use their depth to open the game up and make it a run and gun affair. That's right, last, as we mentioned, 91 to 68, Simpson pouring on the points. That was the last time these, team, these two teams met, but the Beavers out to seek some revenge there as, as Simpson gets on the scoreboard. The Redmen tying up the game at two. Carl Brack inside, Rod, uh, Gare, and I guess uh, 
Coach Bruce Wilson feels that he has a lot of talent, can be a, a top player in the conference in the future. He's just a freshman. Simpson pushing the ball down court now, trying to make things happen fast, but Beaver D catching up with him, John. Yes, Gary, the Beavers hustled back on defense there. There's a little errant pass by Simpson. Could have got the fast break going there, but instead they're just going to have to run the half-court offense. If you can see on your screens, Simpson kind of does have a height advantage out there right now against the Beavers, but Beavers aren't letting that get the best of them. Jim Berg, ball handling the ball, gets it out top to Seward. Seward's going to set up the O. You got to remember, last night, Brett Bergstrom, Buena Vista lost the services of their senior center in the first two minutes against Central, and that's a key injury. Uh, Bergstrom has his ankle in a cast. He tore his Achilles tendon, John, and it, they don't expect him back, I, I guess, for the rest of the season. That's too bad, but the Beavers played a good game last night, went down to the wires. We can see Brad Rohr with a tough rebound off the board. Well, Gare, uh, that's the guy right there, Brad Rohr, Roger Kalki, who's starting, and Mike Fay, were, and uh, uh, Jeff Dix came in, the fabulous four. They did a marvelous job last night taking over for BV's leading scorer and leading rebounder, doing a good job inside. That's right, another thing in uh, Bergstrom, he has a lot of leadership and a lot of poise. So take a look at their bench. We have the head coaches and uh, Coach Spielman, assistant coach Meyer, and then we have Brett Bergstrom sitting right beside the coach, doing some assistant coaching, you might say, and supporting his team as a uh, Simpson takes the lead by two. They got the big steal, they're going for the fast break. Chris Hodge there, Gary, right open on the way up. Went on in, got a nice dish there. Had the break, it looked like he's a little, little, little cherry picking there, but gets the bucket. They got it, John. So the Beavers down by four, they gotta see what they can come up with. Seward controlling the atmosphere for the Beavers over to Roar. Roar feeds to Kalki. And, uh, Looks like they called a kick ball there again. All right, here's shows the effectiveness of Coach Bruce Wilson coming in the game for Simpson. Uh, David Teske, a sophomore forward from Hubbard. And also number 21, J.D. Hartung, who was supposed to start, but uh, Brent Brown got the honors tonight. Yeah, it looks like they, they're a real deep ball club, like I said before, Gary, and, and they're very athletic. And it looks like they're gonna be pretty physical too inside. Kalki with the feed, the roar, and Roar's gonna go up off the glass. He finds a hole for the Beavers, and it's a two-point game. Beavers have to come back now. They're playing uh, full-court pressure, John, on pick the him defense. Up, pick him up man-to-man, -man, Gare, but the, it seems like it doesn't really bother him too much. Simpson breaking it rather easily. And that right there, you see that Chris Hodge kind of going all the way for Simpson, glides through the paint and up and in. They have a four-point lead, four to eight or score here in the early going. With nearly four minutes gone here in the first half, Kolke's jumper no good, and Simpson gets a rebound from Hotch. Hotch takes the ball all the way down court, feeds it over to Brock, and Brock with the outside jumper. You think a big guy like Brock would do some work outside, but he also has that outside shot, or inside, but he has that outside shot too, John. He did a nice job there. It looks like Chris Hotch is doing it all for him. Got the rebound, took it down, made the nice dish to call Brack with the J from about 12 foot. Looks like this, like I said they before, Gary, Simpson really a bunch of thoroughbreds out there running up and down the floor. Right there we have Berg driving to the hoop and uh, I believe he was fouled, so uh, the ball went out of bounds or something, so <laughs> nonetheless it's Beaver's ball, a pass in to Berg. He's setting up the O. Gary, it's important that if uh, Simpson jams it up the middle inside against Roar that Matt Seward and Jim Berg hit from the outside right there is a big key. Jim Berg hits the J from about 19 almost. Jim Berg has great distance, and I bet you later on he's going to be sinking some big 3P, 3PTs. Oh, that's what we need tonight, Gary. We need some big plays. Oh, Mike Fay, I want to see a dunk here, Mike. Come on. Mike Fay, all the way. He, it falls. Didn't quite get the whole stuff, but he got enough to get the turkey happy. 8 to 10, our score. And Fay, with the adrenaline flowing, uh, applies a little, little slap. On number 21, J.D. Harton, John. Well, Mike's playing really aggressive tonight, Gary. That's a nice steal. He almost got the dunk for him. He said he's going to dunk one for, for me tonight. Miracle Mike almost got the big dunk there. 
but once again he tried to come back and tried to create another steal which is which is good with right what the beavers want gary they want to be aggressive and that's what coach spielman wants to see he wants to see aggressive defense out there and uh, right now beavers are down two gary as we take a look at uh, jeff spielman he giving uh matt seward and mike fay a break as he lets imers wendell imers and jeff dix come in the ball game both uh helped out a lot last night off the bench for the beavers uh, wire victory. It came down the wire last night against Central. Chris and Lehman there. Chris Lehman, I believe, Garrett, hits the J. Jeff Dix had to fight through about a brick wall to get through all those picks and stuff to get at Lehman. And Bird goes out with a shot. It falls good, and he gets a few fingers in the face, and he's going to have a chance to turn this into a three-point play and put the Beavers right back in the ball game. 10 to 12 are scoring now. If he tops this off, it'll be a one-pointer, John. I tell you, Jim Berg with a nice move to the hoop there, showing good athleticism. Took a right strong to the hole, got hammered, really, and made the shot. Nice soft touch from there, Gare. Sure is. The Beavers are looking to work themselves up in the top half of the Iowa Conference with this game. Coming off a big victory last night, as I said, the Central, and now we have Jimmy DeMars coming into the ball game for the Beavers. Think big thing about Jim DeMars, Gary, is really aggressive on the D. Got a, had a big key steal last night, setting up the Beaver comeback and the big win last night. Sure did. Simpson with the ball, working it around. Vasky up top, underneath to Brock. And that's a big turnover as one of the Irons takes it down the court, finds Roar all alone. Roar's gonna take the drive, the one had shot. And he's a foul there, big. Nice move by Roar, he took it, took it nice and strong to the hole. Dave Teske didn't have position for Simpson. And so Simpson ends up picking up the foul. Roar's gonna go line, shoot two, Gare. Could put the Beavs in the lead. Here in the first half, 14-19 left. In the first half till halftime, Roar's first shot all net. We take a look at Brad Roar. He's a, he's a key player for the Beavs, sophomore forward, six foot four, 185, near, near Storm Lake here's hometown, Sutherland, Iowa, where uh, he was an all-round athlete there. And uh, right there, he shows his consistency, both free throws, and puts the Beavers in the lead as since taking the ball down court. Gary, uh, Roar is just a force on the boards, and he's really, he's gonna have to, like they say, like. Jess Bielman said, suck it up, as long as uh, Dix and Kalki and Faye inside since the big absence of Bergstrom. That's right, and they're doing a pretty good job so far there. The pass from Vlasky to Gavin, and Gavin hits it for Simpson, giving them the lead back. We got a teeter-totter game right now here in the first half. As Wendell Limers kind of loses the ball out of bounds there, John, but that's all right. Back in the game, Gary, Chris Hodge, he was doing it all for him before. Had a couple buckets, and uh, looks like he may be the key for him. Sure will. A little orchestra music there as Simpson taking the ball down court. <laughs> Tough shot there. Nice D by Wendell Imers. Got in his face. And there, there you go, Gary. Good aggressive defense. Wendell Imers making a tough shot. And Brad Rohr with a nice position, getting the foul on number 51, Gavin. So, like... Coach Jeff Spielman said, good aggressive defense is going to create things for his offense. And uh, Imers is going to take a seat and uh, have a talk with the coach. So is Roger Kulke as Matt Seward and Mike Faye come back in the ball game for the Beavers. Jimmy DeMars, Ali oops it to Roar for the pass. Dick's going to take the drive. Jumper from about eight foot, hits the glass, nails it, puts the Beavs in the lead, 15-14, against a tight ball game here with the Simpson Redmond. Bruce Wilson says, who is that guy? Somebody get on him. He, nice shot off the glass by Dix. He made a big key uh, substitution Ooh. last night. That's right. Oh, nice bucket by number 51, yeah. Gavin. Nice high off the glass. A little intimidation there by Brad Rohr. And DeMars this pass. A little while as we have people flying in the bleachers. Hartung's all right. He went sailing in. And Simpson plugging away with Lemon. Lehman, big, big off the bench for the Redmen. And they established three point lead here. 15 18 our score with 12 35 in the first half. Gary uh, Lehman was Simpson's leading scorer last year in, in the conference, which is kind of a surprise. He's a 
He must be a super sub, one of those type players, I guess, Gare. Foul oh. on that play by Brad Rohr, I believe. Guess they got him on the charge there, Gare. Yeah. Matt Seward wants a little timeout, talk with Coach Spielman. So our score, 15-18, 12-22, the Beavers showing by three, keep it here. From 7 a.m. to midnight, you're only a phone call away from hearing your favorite hits at 9749-1234 or 9749-1235. It's just that simple. On the station with your hit music. BBC. Good evening and welcome back to Stevens Fieldhouse. I'm Gary Van Ias along with John Pagel. We'll take a look at some of the stats here early going. Buena Vista has six turnovers so far in the ball game. Simpson only two. Each team equal in rebounds, three to three. Uh, right now, John, let's take a look at the game last night. Matt Seward driving left-handed lay-in with 26 seconds left. Proved the difference in a thrilling 62 to 21 or 61 win over Central last night. The winning points came after Buena Vista rallied 10 points down with 17-20 left in the game. That was a big spark for the Beavers. And let's see if that carries over tonight as Brad Rohr comes over the steal over to the Mars and the Beaver O oh, is going to see what they can do to get back in this ball game. They're only down by three and the Mars loses the ball, but Seward quick to the hustle and gets the handle on it. Gary, once again, the Beaver defense turning the trick, getting good and aggressive play. Great Great pass happen. there by Jimmy DeMars into Roar, and Roar just touched with a perfect touch, the cheese on the cracker to put it in, John. I tell you, old Brad Roar, he's PT in the paint. Prime time, baby, a nice sirloin steak. A1 steak sauce for the Beavers, down by one with, with 11, 33 left on the clock here in the first half. As the big drive by Brown doesn't quite fall, Mike Fake coming up with a rebound for the Beavs, and Jimmy DeMar is taking it down. Every shot Simpson's been taking, a Beaver man has been in their face. So, you know, Beavers are making it tough for them. Oh, nice pass from DeMars to Faye. Just missed. Little over touch there by Faye. Simpson on the fast break. Hotch lays it in and keeps that three-point lead there with the Redmen. Hotch looks like he's finishing off all the breaks for Simpson there, Gary. He's got a about six points off the fast break alone. I don't know what the Redmen ate for dinner tonight, but they're running like firecrackers, let me tell you. Dix with the ball, over to DeMars, DeMars. Nice pass to Faye, and Faye passes back out top, loses it. Vasky taking it, and Seward committing a definite big old foul there as Vasky goes tumbling down the floor. Seward says, hey, I had to do something. Something to stop that Vasky guy. Well, Gary, it was a good try. It was a good foul by, by Seward, but I guess he made it a little bit too obvious. The refs called an intentional foul. Uh, Simpson's going to go to the line for two shots, and they're going to get the ball back. Remember, every weeknight, it's local, national, and international news, sports, features, and weather right here on Cable Channel 3. Watch Innovation News live each weeknight at 6.30, Storm Lake and at Alta's only television newscast from the campus of Univista College. That's right, John. We take a look at Eddie Vasky shooting the technicals, right? No, they call it, I guess, intentional foul. Intentional. Gary, so, so he'd be shooting two foul Excuse shots me. and they get the ball back. My error. Well, well he made the first one, and uh, Simpson at, now has a four-point lead, but they do have the ball. Vasky gets it in. At the top is Brown. Good ball ending, dribbling. Dribbling up. Ah, oh, no, not quite. Call five point. seconds. Five seconds on him, Gare. I tell you, the Beaver defense just tougher than leather tonight, baby, and you ain't be illing. That's Beaver, right. Beavers create another turnover, Gare. They got to come back now with the big O and find four points and get right back in this. Tied up. Kulki with the ball. Or to Seward. Seward's big jumper from Candyland. Don't quite hit it. The follow up by Faye falls down and good. Miracle Mike Faye comes up with the big tip. He got the position inside, Gare. And I tell you, 
Kalki, Faye, Dix, and Roar, the key man inside, are doing the job. Beaver's down just by two, and Faye's gonna go to go the line to cut it down to one, Gare. Faye fails connect, Gary. Just a little off on that shot. Yeah, and I'm gonna take a look at Brown as he sets it up and gets it over to Brock. Simpson wanting to keep that lead and build on it. The Redmen, a really quick team tonight. As we take a look at the field goal percentage, Simpson, 16% ahead of the Beavers. Shooting hot, just like Central was last night through most of the game. And there, there Jeff Dix comes up with a big board for the Beavs. Jeff Dix, he's playing hard and aggressive ball. Like they said, the Fab Four, Kalki, Fay, Dix, and Roar are doing the job for the injured Brett Bergstrom. There's Jig Jim Berg. Boy, he's tough from outside, Gary. He cans the J from about 19, almost another three-pointer. Berg sure is hot. Uh, he attended Jefferson High School in Bloomington, Minnesota, where he was a member of a state championship team there, team captain in 1986, John. As Simpson goes inside, and they, they score another bucket, you know, I, the Beavs gonna have to tighten up inside. They've been playing good aggressive ball, getting a shot up, but they can't let the ball inside that easy. Kalki, big off the glass, and he makes it. Beavers doing a good job. Game tied up at 23 with 8.54 left in the first half. And uh, it's, not, it's not the same game as it was earlier this year. Uh, Simpson had that 16 to two run that we talked about earlier to establish a 46 to 20 halftime lead. Not such thing tonight here at the Beaver home court. Beavers keeping it tight with Simpson as Brock goes up with a shot. And Coach, we have Coach Spielman won a five seconds on Brown but didn't get it. Uh, good box out by number 34. Mike Fay getting the foul on Wagner, the freshman from Los Angeles, California, Gary. We have Wendell Eimers coming back into the ball game and for Simpson, Mike Sadler, a senior forward from Des Moines, pretty big boy, 6'4", 195, number 45. Gary, they're gonna have to bring in Mike Faye again. He's gotta shoot the one and one. Faye just left the game having Roar come in, but he's gonna be back in there, like you say, John, and see what he can do from that charity strike. Faye is really doing a good job for the Beavers this year. He's provided at the beginning there, some good time off the bench, and now he's become a full-time starter. As he connects on the first one, Mike's a good athlete, like we were saying last night. Good thing about Mike is he's a sophomore academically, but a freshman athletic, athletic ability, eligibility wise, excuse me. <laughs> if he has a couple extra years here at BV, he's more than welcome to play some ball for Coach Jeff Spielman, I believe, John. I'd rather have him on my team than against me, Gare. That's right, that cruiser haircut that he has just kind of intimidates the opposition, you might say, as Simpson takes the ball down the court. Tell you, the, the Beaver defense, Gary, is just really aggressive tonight. They gotta keep the ball from being put inside, though. Dix, look at him on side. He's just like a hawk out there. I'm That's gonna have right. to start calling him the hawk, Gary. Kind of like Mike Singletary on the, on the basketball court. Got the eyes moving everywhere as he questions the ref on that call. Dix looked like he got pushed in the back there, Gary. Refs didn't see it that way. Looks like they've been a little, little more consistent tonight, Gary, with the officiating, making good, fair, fairly decent calls. Simpson getting the ball in, up top to Hartung. Hartung working the ball around. He's gonna try to drive the baseline to size not, and then he does. It's the rim, and who's gonna get the board but Roger Kalki for the Beavers. Boy, Roger Kalki really fought for that rebound. He earned that rebound. Beavers gonna try to build onto their two-point lead, 25-23 the score as we take a look at Imers handling the ball. Gets it up top to Kalki. Kalki wants to drive the paint, and then he finds Imers again. 7.43 left. Leading scorers for the Beavers, Jim Berg with seven, and Brad Rohr and Mike Faye each have six chipping in there. Pretty uh, consistent scoring, a balanced attack for Buena Vista as Simpson again on the fast break there, John, with Ed, Eddie Vasky, junior guard, pouring on the steam, tying up the game at 25. Vasky made the steal and finished off the break from a nice pass from Lehman. The Hawk, Jeff Dix, he's driving inside. Little fancy move, can't buy it though. Tries tipping it in himself. And Simpson 
Brock saves it for Simpson. They come back down the court. They're tearing down there. And Rohr comes up with a loose ball. A big turnover. Nice. Rohr good off the boards and managed to get some steals, too. That was a nice play by Wendell, I Wendell Imers there, Gary. Made a nice little tip there to stop the pass from the fast break. Rohr came with the loose ball. Wendell Imers playing good little D tonight. Nice pass by Wendell. Good dish. He drove to the hoop. Got the man committed. Dix went up with the shot. Nice and strong and gets the foul. He's going to be shooting two, Gary. Wendell Imer's really proven valuable, Gary. He's doing a lot of good jobs inside for, I should say, for the point guard. He's doing a good job uh, passing the ball, running the offense. And I uh, think that a uh, nice pass there is indicative of how he's beginning to start to play for the Beavs. Back in the ball game now for the Redmen, uh, David Tasky, number 53, and also the clutch man who comes in and scores a lot for him, Mr. Bench, Chris Lehman. The, Hawk, the Hawk, Jeff Dix, can fail to connect on that one, Gary. Looks like he wanted that one pretty bad. Well, he gets a second chance right here, hoisting it. Whoosh. Jimmy DeMar is now stepping onto the court. And give Jeff Dix a breather as he gets half of his free throws there. Beavers picking him up again, Gary. A little man-to-man -man full court press. Wendell Eimers really vulturing the old number 21, J.D. Hartung, number 45, Gareth shot, fails to connect. Brad Roar, Gareth, just tough on the boards, that guy. And then the Beavers fast break with Jim Bird. He takes a seven foot jumper. 622 left in the first half, 28-25, our score. I'm Gary Van Ias along with John Pagel. That was a nice pass by Wendell Imers there, Gary. Nice feed up court to big Jimmy, Jim Berg in number 45. Matt, Mike Sadler, tough in the paint. Another nice little shot. Looks like the Simpson really likes to go inside a lot, Gary. Get the good right. shot. That's right, Sadler with just the right touch there. And uh, it's a one point ball game right now as Sadler to inbounds the ball. A little pressure there by Wendell again. Up to Lehman there. Tell you what, John, the Redmen really have a way of just all of a sudden breaking things right down the court. A lot of speed on this on this young club. Yeah, a real run and gun ball club, Garrett. Lehman is, looks like, and uh, Chris Hodge like to get up and down the court and finish off the fast break. Not a lot of seniors on the roster for Simpson. They only have two. The man from the bench, Chris Lehman, and also Mike Sadler. But otherwise, oh, and Brent Brown, the guard, too. But otherwise, it's all pretty much underclassmen, juniors, sophomores, freshmen. Bruce Wilson feels he's going to have a very good ball club next year, Gary, and he thinks that they can be a real force to contend with in the Iowa Conference. And right now, the Redmen have a one-point lead over the BV Beavers of Seward. It's it to Berg, and Berg from Sweetsland hits the rim. Don't make it, and there goes that fast break. Berg with the height to break it up. Good jumper. And a slow the pace down just a tad here, John, with 5.37 left in the first half. That was nice hustle by Jim Berg. Missed a shot, was good enough to get back on the old uh, defense, knocking the ball away, saving an easy bucket for the Redmen. Sadler with the turnaround jumper. Rolls it in. And Sadler looks really tough in the paint, Gary. That's another nice move he's had tonight. Beaver, Beaver's trying to set up the O, and as Seward misses his shot, Jimmy DeMars picks up the board and puts it up and in. Beaver's within one, 30-31 our score. 5-0-1 left here in the first half. Excellent feed there by Hartung. Doesn't quite fall for Simpson as Berg running his own fast break with the Beavers to DeMars, and DeMars misses Roar's follow-up, no good, and Simpson gonna break it away, three on two. And Vasky loses the ball out of bounds. Vasky trying to do a little hot dog action, a little mustard on the ball, went out of bounds. Looked like it went off his foot. The referees didn't see it that way, though. Kind of tried to pass it to himself, and that don't work here in the Iowa Conference, John. No, it doesn't, Gare. Beaver's really hustling for, really, really hustling for the ball. And I, I think that that's really indicative of what the score is. It's really tight. 
Central Simpson's getting a lot of good shots, and there we go, Roger Kalki with the steal. Seward, pass over to DeMar. DeMar with four quick points for Pina Mista. Puts him up top by one, 32-31. Hartung taking the ball, controlling it. Simpson wanting that lead back in this teeter-totter affair. Sadler's jumper doesn't fall. We got a pushing off foul there underneath on Roger Kalki to slow things down. Mike Faye gonna enter the ball game. Roger, the just, Roger just out of position there, Gary. Looks like he almost had the board, just was caught behind the man, so they guess they called the over the back. Beaver's gotta stop that inside pass, sadly, Gary. He looks like he's really, really taking it to him. And they're doing a pretty good job, job right now as Simpson passing the ball a lot on the outside. 30 seconds on the shot clock. Might, they get it inside the Sadler on the paint. And three seconds on the big man from the morning, Sadler. Can't quite get the shot up in time. Brad Rohr felt that was about 10 seconds in the lane. He thought he might open up a little tent, a little campsite in there. Yeah, get the old campfire burning, get away those mosquitoes. I guess it'll work, John. Guess the ref finally got smart and tried to make, finally made the call. Burke digging the ball down court. Seward, the big outside shooters, Seward and Berg and Jimmy DeMars, who came on strong here in the late. Four quick points, and Berg tries his magic shot. Don't quite fall. Beavers. He gets a rebound. Beavers really with three guards in the lineup and two forwards. Nice move there by. Hartung, J.D. Hartung working the baseline with his own little glaze and puts it up and in for two as Rohr tries to answer for Buena Vista. Don't quite work. 32-33, the Beavers down by one. Both teams in the bonus at this point with 3.10 left in the first half. Hodge got lucky there. He uh, got caught up in the air and he just finally had to just pass it back. He was lucky he didn't get called for the steps coming on down. Hartung really likes to drive that baseline and there, he, he drove it in again he didn't take the shot, but the ball got lost out of bounds and it's still Simpson's ball. Beaver's playing nice aggressive D on the outside. Oh, they call steps there, it was a good call the ref. He fell down, might be a little wet spot out there. Well, I tell you what, Brent Brown just kinda, he's sweating pretty intensely out there. You may not be able to tell, but he sure is. And a, just a little slick spot there on the floor, John, and he went down and Beaver's got the ball in the hands of Seward. Matt Seward really hasn't really done too much scoring-wise in the game, but he's really doing a good job running offense. Last night, Seward played a big role in the Beaver's victory with 17 points. As Simpson again on the run and tear. And Brown can't, can't find the hole as Faye a little upset, scrambling after the ball. Heavy pressure there applied. Sadler in the paint, this hook shot. He's called again for three big seconds. Sadler's like the fire ranger there, Gary. Trying to send up a little tent campsite. Tell you what, he got the glue shoes when he gets in the paint, John. <laughs> Mike Fay won the foul though. Looks like he got hammered on the rebound. I mean, after the rebound, nice board by Mike. And the refs didn't call it. Almost got a, a bucket out of it by Simpson. 2.20 left here in the first half. Smelling halftime, the Beavers down by one, 32-33, one of the Limers cruising the ball. Wendell better get rid of it. Looks like they may call the five seconds on him. Jimmy Namars, the Beavers, Simpson really plugging up the paint there. Beavers Tipped off the hand there of Chris Hodge, and it's going to be Buena Vista's ball. Uh, Gary, the Beavers aren't really coming to the ball at all in the pass, and it's really almost cost them a couple five-second calls there. Ball and knocked away by from DeMars. Good takeaway by Simpson. Brown, Brown the point guard for him. Beavers are playing. Heavy pressure, don't want... Remnant score, good rejection there by Mike Fay, pounding it in there. Jimmy DeMars taking it coast to coast, up off the glass, around, around, and 
down and down, 34, 33, 119 left in the first half. Magic Mike Faye there, Gare, with the big stuff, knocks it out, starts the fast break. Jimmy DeMars finishes off, that's good defense. Beavers up, 34, 33 with a minute eight left. Oh, steps, that's good call by the ref. Brown in a little daze there, uh, kind of uh, gets up slow and wipes his nose. And <laughs> still can't figure out what's quite going on. His team down by one, 34-33. 59 seconds left here in the first half as Jim Berg tosses it inbounds to Kulke. And the Beavers going to work the ball. Kulke gets it to Seward, having a little trouble there. But Simpson applying every pressure, playing a man-to-man. -man. Hey, now is Irish. Pass it to Seward. Seward doesn't get quite enough arch on the ball. And pushing off foul called inside That's underneath. A call, ref. Coming up at halftime, Missy and Todd with Chalk Talk. And Brian Gillette will have an interview with Coach John Naughton, whose gals were beaten by the Lady Reds here earlier. That should be something to look forward to here at the half. 44 seconds till we come down to that halftime. As right now, El, Ga El Gavin going to the line for the Redmen, trying to tie this ball game up. What'd you think of that shot? What'd you think of that shot? Looked like, looked like his grandma out there shooting that one, Gary. A little air ball, he's laughing about it. Yeah, he can handle it. Fans sure like it. As Brad Rohr now back into the ball game. 34-33 our score. He's in for Mike Fay, Gary. He looks like Mike Fay looks like Rocky after fighting Apollo Creed a couple times. A little bloody eye there. Looks like he got caught there with an elbow or something. Yeah, he's sucking down the water, getting the cool down. Seward drives, gets it over to Berg in the corner. Shot clock's off. Shot clock's off, Gary. Non-existent at this point here, late in the first half. Imers. It's a Terror. 18 seconds on the time board. Koki up off the glass, no good. Rebound by Lehman. And Simpson gonna look for their last shot with eight seconds left. Pass inside the, the Gavin. Gavin hits it, three seconds left. Two, one, roars, big roar. Comes up short. So our score at the half, 34-35. The Simpson Redmond up over the Buena Vista Beavers. We're gonna send it back for a commercial break. You. Yeah, yeah. I got you covered. I only want a little. Come on. Sure, I understand. Just a couple hits. I don't have any money. Please. You mean you bring me out here for nothing? That's a no-no. Understand? What are you, stupid? What do I look like, Richie? You know I'm good for Richie. You know I'll pay you back. Richie, I just gave you $100. That's got nothing to do with yes, now. Richie. Listen to me. No money, no candy, no crack. You understand? It'll dissolve. Lose yourself. Richie, come on, don't leave, please. Listen, shh, shh. Hey, girl, you're gonna get that little red-headed girl, and the both of you is gonna come over to my crib. Charlotte? That's right. We're gonna have a nice little party. Understand me? Then I'll take care of you. Univista College, imagine the possibilities. You imagine it, we'll work with you to capture it. The main reason I chose Univista College was because I knew that its size allowed for students to get involved in extracurricular activities. When I came to Univista, I never imagined I could become so involved. I think that's what's made the biggest difference for me. For me, that's what life at college is all about. At Univista, I've never had a dull moment. There are no limits to what you can achieve at Univista College when you imagine the possibilities. Once again, a Chalk Talk. I'm Missy Stump. And I'm Todd Vagley. Now we're going to demonstrate a 1-3-1 press. First of all, you're going to have your quickest guard probably on the ball. Probably your other guard in the center with the fours distributed at each side and the man in the back. The key to this is you want to get them in the trap zones. Here and here. Using that as, your, as an added man. 
All right. Against this, you want to keep, you're going to have to work with an even front press. So you keep your two ball handlers here and here, and then you send your inbounds man up into this area. You know, right, floating around here looking for that. Now with this even front against an odd front press, it's going to make this man decide, you know, who am I going to guard here? And you can just rock it back and forth, and this man's going to have to run, you know, twice as much. You know, his main objective is to herd the ball to one side or the other, but with that even front, you're not letting him do that. You're just keeping that. And this man, you know, he's cutting up here. Testing. He goes back, One, two, he's cutting up here. Tasting. He's drawing attention here. Plus, you can have these men cut up in the areas, but make sure you don't get, get it too clogged. Reaction. Get all your offensive players Apparently there. there and then you can also, like, Wait, run back not. picks. You can I'm run a man up here. This, this man can pick off the all man right, here just and just have him go to the hoop. This what in the hell? And this man is your pivotal man. If the ball goes to here, he has to be able to shift over. This guy has to be here. And again, watching for that back door. So this man will be the pivotal man rotate each side as they occur. Okay, say you can't get to two men and the defensive player does hurt you. Now you have to, like Missy said, the timeline is going to be an extra defender. So you should give up your dribble right in this area and then be looking for a passing zone. I'm, they'll overplay the passing zones. So you should probably want to hit this man being a cutter through here or this man coming up to this area right in there for a pass. Right. And we should say we are being a little discriminatory here, man or woman press. Mm -hmm. And once again, watching this person rocking back and forth with the pass, these two people should be your quickest people on the court. And these, again, your power forward or your small forward. The center always be looking for that backdoor cut, always trying to hurt him into this area because, again, this area is very dangerous. And also something you can do, you can send your man to a corner and go with that long baseball pass, lob it in to get it down, down deep, or, you know, you might want to try a cross-court pass. That's probably too risky, but, you know, if it's down to nine seconds, you might as well try to get it into the front court so you don't pick up the 10-second violation and turn the ball right back over again. When would you use this, Todd? When is this a good time to use this defense? Uh, this defense probably won't work well in the Iowa Conference because it's designed primarily to use in a smaller gym where, you know, say you're you're cut off, your gym is only this big, and plus it's only this wide, so you have that much more court space. And then, you know, with that more players in a smaller area, it works even more effective. You want to use this when a team is on like a 10 to 1 run against you. You want to just slow them down. Don't let them get a fast break and get into their offense wide, right away, you know, just to break the momentum and kind of have it shift back and you know if you're playing a slow down game this is a good defense for you to run because it'll make you can dictate the tempo out of this defense. It's more of a shake up a defense, offensive yes. defense, yeah. Yep. Exactly. Understandable. And that's Chalk Talk. I'm Missy Stump. And I'm Todd Vagley. You ignored it for a long, long time. And so the horror in your mind grew because you let your taxes just sit there. Why let it haunt you? File now. File accurately. And make your taxes less taxing. There is a need in your own hometown. Please join your local chapter. Carol. Tom. Some people still don't realize how space technology benefits everyone. Well, you've played a detective. Why don't you give him a clue and I'll be your helper. Okay, partner. Look at this. Without warning, hurricanes can take a huge toll in lives and property. But with space satellites, we now have ample warnings. And thousands of lives have been saved. Hey, Carol, we're a great team. We're a great item. Space technology. This is what's in it for you. Hello there, good Samaritans. I'm Captain IV, not to be confused with Poison IV. But anyway, before I put on this monkey suit and this Panama hat, I was a lonely mass comm student. I didn't know what I wanted to do or what I wanted to be. But then I got involved with Innovation Video. I started doing camera work and technical duties. I love Innovation Video, and you will also. So tune in and watch Innovation Video, because you will never know what comes up next. Well, I'm out of here. Adios. I think that's Spanish.
Good evening and welcome back to Innovation Video Sports Extravaganza here at halftime. Our score, the Beavers are down by one behind the Simpson Redmen, 34-35. The game before this, we're in the second part of our doubleheader. The Lady Beavers fell to Simpson, 70-88, to where Kim Beckman scored 19 points. And now we have an interview with head coach John Naughton. Thanks, Gary. Yes, the extravaganza continues here at Buena Vista College. I'm your friendly uh, interviewer, Brian Gillette. It seems that's all I've been doing this week. Maybe if I got one of them right, they'd let me do something, in it, something else. But anyway, I have with me head coach of the Buena Vista women's basketball team, Coach John Naughton. Coach, you started off the weekend real well. You opened with a big win over Central. Yeah, not too bad. Um, Central isn't the ball club that Simpson is, but they're a good ball club. And uh, our kids played well, did a very good job. Uh, this is the first time we've both beaten uh, Central in, uh, oh, uh, ever, I guess, double headers <laughs> anyway. Uh, we beat them down there, both the men and us, and um, we beat them here, both men and us. So that's at least the uh, first of that nature anyway. It's always, it's always good when the Beavers take it to the Dutchman down in Pella. But the road got a little rockier tonight for your Beavers as they uh, faced a tough Simpson squad. You came away with an 18-point loss. Yeah, I thought it was a demolition derby out there for a while. But anyway, uh, they hit 59% uh, on us the second half, which is uh, we couldn't do that. They just let us take layups, you know. But uh, they're a good ball club. They're really good. I think they got the most conference or most uh, talent of anybody in the conference. And uh, maybe they do, uh, but they're in third place now. so. Uh, and I don't think they're going to get any. They're 10 and 3, though, which is a pretty good conference record. Uh -huh. I guess uh, Kim Beckman picking up her fourth foul in the first half, that had to hurt. Yeah, you know, when you got the 12th leading scorer in the country, and um, she picks up uh, the fourth foul, and uh, she's averaging uh, 25 a game, but she ended up at 19, which, uh, uh, but that hurts you. You can't play defense. And um, I. Uh, I thought that uh, it's got kind of a bad call, but naturally I would think that way. Uh, however, uh, they're, they're big people, and we're not very big, as uh, people could have viewed through the television there. But um, they're, they're a good ball club, and they deserve to win, but we could have held that down a little bit, but we, we just threw them up from all over trying to get back in the game. Yeah, we noticed a few three-pointers uh, going yeah. errantly there late. Well, now, what's left for the Lady Beavers, then, as we head to the uh, final part of the season? Well, I'm out of the furnace into the fire, I guess. Uh, we go to um, William Penn uh, Tuesday, and they beat us one point here at home. Uh, and then we come back home on Saturday night with Dubuque, University of Dubuque, and they're hot right now. And then we go play the two conference leaders <laughs> on the next week in Wartburg and Luther. So, But we're, uh, uh, we're going to strive to... Uh, get a 14 and 12 record out of it anyway so that um, our gals can uh, uh, leave that to go on next year, which um, they'll do well next year. Yeah, speaking about next year, you only graduate one senior off this year's squad. I know I got to put you on the spot here because I am a reporter. What kind of goals are you setting for your team? It may be a little early to think about it, but for next year. Well, uh, there's no doubt in our mind that uh, we're going to be a contender next year. Um, our only problem is we're not very big, but we've got the best speed in the conference. Uh, we're going to have the leading scorer in the nation in all probability. Uh, maybe the leading free thrower in the nation. But, um, and, uh, but if we get some help from that freshman class that can come in there and give us some strength underneath the boards, we can go a long ways. One thing to remember, though, is uh, the team that we played tonight only graduates one person. <laughs> and um, Luther only graduates about one person. And um, uh, Wartburg grabs, graduates about one or two. Uh, so it's going to be a dogfight next year. Yeah, it always is in the Iowa Conference. Well, if longevity is the way that you judge a coach's performance, certainly we, in John Naughton we have one of the best in the country. 37 years coaching basketball. John, I'd like to thank you for joining us to, here in the halftime of the game, and we'll be back with more of the extravaganza. I have a wheelchair here that came from space. You're kidding, Isaac. No, try and lift it. Oh, it's light as a feather. Well, perhaps a heavy feather. It's made from super light material developed for space vehicles. Weighs half what a standard chair weighs, and it's just as strong. Must be a lot easier to maneuver, fold, and store away. Exactly. Well, on that note, I'd say it's another down-to-earth benefit from space. Space technology. This is what's in it for you.
Good evening and welcome back to Siemens Fieldhouse. We're at halftime. The Buena Vista Beavers scored 34 points. Simpson up by one with 35. And take right, a look right now, John, at the statistics here from the first half. Leading all, leading all scorers in the Beavers so far, Jim Berg with nine points. Also pitching in a balanced attack, Brad Rohr, Mike Fay, and Jimmy DeMars each have six points. And also in there for the Beavers, Jim, Jeff Dix has three. Matt Seward only with two points tonight, and Roger Kalki also with two. Big thing there, Matt Seward had 17 points last night in the ball game, only two so far tonight here in the first half. And John, how's Simpson doing with stats? Well, Gary, uh, Chris Hotch is doing a nice job for him tonight. He's got six points. The big tall kid from, uh, I believe, uh, Waverly, Carl Brack, he has six. Uh, Coach Wilson wanted him to come in and do a fine job tonight for him inside. Ed Vasky, one of their prime time players, he has five. Uh, the next is Chris Lehman, he has six. Uh, Mike Sadler came in the game and gave some nice, got some nice buckets inside the paint. He had four, and Chris Lehman, like I said, had six. And uh, Garrett, they're really forcing the issue. They're bringing the ball up down the court, and the Beavers are playing tough defense tonight. And I, really, is it's, it's a good ball game, a good contest. Simpson, I, Simpson, John is shooting 50 percent from the field, while the Beavers are only at 43 percent. So they got some catching up to do. However. Buena Vista is good from the line, shooting 80% for their free throws. And uh, Simpson kind of suffering there six, at 60%. Uh, Garrett, I think two surprises in this game. One is that Alvin Gavin came off the bench. He has six points. And Matthew Seward, who led the Beavers, or were chipped in 17 last night, or I, th I think led the Beavers in scoring, only has, I should say, has no points. He's 0 for 5. So the Redmen are doing their jobs well. They wanted to keep uh, Berg and and uh, Seward out of the scoring. They've, they've kept uh, Seward down, but they haven't kept Berg down at all. He has nine. Yeah, they're doing a good job. Uh, turnover ratio, the Beavers have 11, Simpson has seven, and uh, each, each is pretty even there, pretty even turnover ratio there. Garrett, we have a uh, Buena Vista has five steals and Simpson has seven. And the assists are pretty even too. It's really an even game. It's it really is. It's been kind of a seesaw battle. I think we can have a really exciting finish, Gary. That it's, it's got all the makings for a, a, a firecracker like we had yesterday. That's right. That was a great game last night. What do you think Coach Jeff Spielman is going to want to do here in the second half with Simpson? I think he wants to get the ball more to uh, Jim Berg. He's obviously the hot man. He feels that he can probably shoot the J from 19 or so. And Brad Rohr inside as well. He's scoring well inside. And hopefully he can get good rebounding from Mike Fay, Roger Kalki, and Jeff Dix. All right, back to the action live. Simpson with the inbounds. They got the lead and they got the ball. A one point difference here so far. 34-35 at the beginning of the second half. The Redmen working the ball around inside and Roger Kalki almost coming up with a steal there. Kind of loses kind of his own body weight and momentum carries him out of bounds with the ball. So Simpson going to keep the ball. Beavers start out where they left off, Gare. Good, aggressive defense. Trying to deny the ball and knock it away at any possible chance. Simpson working it around. Nice pass in there underneath the Brock. He took a little cha-cha listen there, Gary. Yeah. Little, little dance step. Refs picked it up and called the travel on him. When Mama and Dad had taught him how to walk, they really taught him how to walk, John. <laughs> Roger Kolke, not accustomed to taking the ball down court, so he get, decides, hey, I gotta get this to Matt Seward. Seward with the ball. He was working around, they want the lead. They're down by one. Jim Berg, the key man so far for Buena Vista, as Jeff Spielman wants his fellas to put some more points up as Brad Rohr goes up and hard. Plays it in for two. The Beavers with the lead in the seesaw battle, 1905 in the ball game. Gary, once again, Brad Rohr, and there's a nice steal by Roger Kalki denying the ball again. Beavers just playing tremendous aggressive defense. Now they're just starting to deny the ball inside the paint, whereas before they were playing aggressive defense out on top of the key and, and away from the basket. Berg, one. 
Passes to Roar, takes his own big one. Hits the rim, falls short, and Seward with the rebound outside from Candyland. Sinks it big for the Bees. Puts him up by four, 39-35. Nice outside form there by Seward. Seward from trifecta land, he connects. And it's, it's a good way to, for him to start off, who was 0 for 5 in the, in the first half. Oh, nice, tough move by Brack, getting the ball in the paint again. Beavers got to gotta stop that, and Simpson's picking him up now, man to man on the little full court press. Simpson not yet to run, a quick, fast break. Here in the second half, the Beavers in control, somewhat, two point. Spread. Looking the ball to get looking to get the ball inside to Roar. Kalki coming off some picks. Magic Mike Faye setting some hurting in there. And there's the pass to Roar. He goes up with it. And like this just said, gets those big two points. Beavers with the four-point advantage. Brad the Roar. Beginning of the second half. Brad Roar, the enforcer, scoring scoring at will almost inside now. Seems like, got to get him the ball. Goes up with a lot of power. Kulki with the D. Misforms it, and Faye almost with the board, but he loses it. And the follow-up by Brock hits it for two for the Redmen. That, that was lucky play by Simpson there. They got, got the ball knocked away from, uh, from Faye, and it just turned out to be a mad scram for him to get him, getting the easy bunny out of it. And there's Roar again, up and hard. He just keeps, he keeps attacking in there. Doesn't give up, and he's coming up big here for the Beavers in the second half. Beavers are doing a good job. They know who the man to go to. Brad Rohrer inside. Keep giving him the ball. He's, he's just dominating inside. I, I don't think the Simpson Redman can stop him inside the paint. He's just the enforcer. Nice drive there by Vasky, and Vasky turns around, goes up hard, and comes up with two. For the Redmen, two-point game was 16-27 in the second half. Vasky did a little wheeling and dealing there. Drove around, spun around, I should say, and got that nice little J to fall for him. Faye can't connect on his attempt. And there's that quick, quick movement down court by the Redmen. Rejection by Faye again. Powers up hard and Berg off to the races. Can't quite find the hole. Good follow-up by Berg. Or by Roar. We have a little tumbling act there. <laughs> Tell you, Brad Roar is just off the court. Nice steal by Matt Seward. He wheels and deals, and he scores there. Oh, boy. Beaver's starting to pick it up now. Seward smooth. He's hot from outside. He's also hot inside, as he showed you last night. Not too effective in the first half. Only two points, but he's going to try to heat things up here in the second half. Kalki up with tough D and discourages Brock's shot. Roar has eight points so far in the second half. He's leading the Beavers as Matt Seward takes the ball down the court, gets it over to Faye. Faye to Berg, and Berg hungry for the hole. He sinks it big. 49, 41, 15, 15 in the second half. Jim Berg blazing saddles. Bruce Wilson should get a timeout here, Gary. Beavers on a big run. He sees it, Brucey baby, little T.O. Jeff Spielman likes what he's seeing. Bruce Wilson does not. Innovation. Uh, Gary, I got a little message read you now, baby. Innovation Video gives you fun and games each and every week on Picture Puzzle. Watch as local contestants try to outdraw each other on for prizes on this video version of popular Pictionary game. Tune in Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evenings at 10 o'clock for the wackiest pictures and the goofiest hosts you'll ever see on Innovation Video. That's right here on your hometown station, Innovation Video, Cable Channel 3. Speaking of wacky pictures, there you go. Hey, you got a couple of wild fans as we see. The Beavers are up by eight, 49-41. The crowd going wild, they love it. As we take a look from the bench, Jeff Spielman says, hey guys, you gotta keep this going. We're looking good here in the second half. We got ourselves a nice lead with 15-06. Let's add to it, let's add to it. Let's not let the Simpson Redmen get back into it. And Simpson, uh, Coach Bruce Wilson says, hey, what are we doing, what are we doing? Gary. I tell you, Mike Faye's like Mr. Pac-Man inside. He's eating him up. He's swatting everything out of there. He sure is. He's had two key blocks here going in the game. And they, each time it started the fast break for a big bucket. And like, we, like Coach Spielman said, 
defense is going to create the offense for his team. And so far, it has done that. And his team is up eight points now. So Simpson trying to get back into a quick with a three-pointer. Doesn't hit. And Seward gets a rebound. Beavers taking it to him. Working the O. Spielman wanting him to work it around a little. Nice pass from the Mars in the Kulki. What'd you think of that? I like that one, Gary. And, and we got a walk. I tell you, Jimmy DeMars, he's looking tough. Every time he comes in, he does, he does the little things. He makes, the, he makes the steals. He makes the passes, and he's played tough, aggressive defense. And right there, a great feed to Kalki. And once again, great defense by the Beavers, forcing another turnover from Simpson. Nice, like, play, nice play by Roar going to the ball, grabbing it before Simpson could steal it away. Jimmy Namaris thinking about the shot. Seward tries to lay it and grab Roar with the foul. I tell you what, he's been there consistently with that offensive and defensive rebound, just tacking it in for two. Like they say, when it rains, it storms, and it's falling heavy here in Siebens Fieldhouse. The Beavers with a 12-point lead here in the second half, 53-41 with 14.01 to go in the game. Simpson wanting, 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 big shot there. And, and J.D. Hartung answers for the Redmen. Gary, the Redmen finally hit a shot. It's been about three or four minutes before they had made a basket. And looks like they got to get the ball to Brad Rohr. He is just dominating inside. And all there, it cost a turnover. The, looks like Matt Seward might have hurt himself there. Baskey drove to the bucket, looking for the, the bucket there. Score right now, Buena Vista 53, Simpson 43. Coming in the ball game for the Redmond, David Teske, and for the Beavers, Wendell Limers. So Matt Seward out of the ball game to get some breath. As point guard, one of the Limers gonna be doing a juggling. Vasky from the line. Gary, that's the first time the red man full court press has worked in getting a steal off it, creating that turn, I should say creating a turnover, getting the Beavers to knock the ball out of bounds. Vasky's second attempt, no good. He's too